Hi, and welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. Today, we're dehydrating pineapples. All right, so first, let's talk a little bit about pineapple. Why did we get all this pineapple here? Well, the first thing is, we saw an ad in Aldi um, for $1.29 a pineapple. So in our area, pineapples are usually twice that price when they're on sale. So of course, the first thing we thought was, let's get a bunch of them and we'll go ahead and preserve them. So we did, we grabbed six of them. And so now it's time to go ahead and cut these up and get them into the dehydrator. So the first thing you wanna do is look on the back here. There's a tag. And I never noticed this before, but it actually tells you how to cut the pineapple. I've never really paid attention because usually fruit doesn't have a tag on it. So I pulled the tag off and realized it has instructions. And it's amazing when you follow the instructions just how easy it is to actually cut a pineapple. So I'm gonna show you how to do that so that you get the most out of your pineapple when you're actually cutting it up to dehydrate. So really all you need is a knife and a cutting board, and you're gonna need a bowl to be able to put all your pieces in. Okay, so we're gonna take the pineapple, turn it on its side, and most people I've seen usually cut the pineapple just below the stem right here where there's still some meat in the pineapple. But what we do is we actually cut the stem off by itself and leave all the pineapple on. So you just very firmly push down on that stem and you may have to rotate it a little bit because I mean, you're cutting through the stem of the pineapple. And there's a reason why we do this, but that's another video. All right, so now you've got the whole pineapple that we'll be able to cut up and dehydrate. This is what you have left. And we'll put this off to the side. And you'll be able to check out the other video on what I'm gonna do with this thing. Okay, so now you have your pineapple. The best way to cut the pineapple, a lot of people core the pineapple. If you don't have one of those fancy coring contraptions that literally goes down and pushes straight through, the best way to do your pineapple is to literally cut it into quarters. So you start at the top, make sure not to cut myself, because that would be bad. Cut it into halves. <clears throat> okay, and then each quarter. Now, you want to cut straight through the middle of the core, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay. All right, so now that you have your four pieces, the reason you cut down the middle of the core is so that each little piece that you cut of the core is fairly small. And then that way, when you're actually cutting it out, you don't cut as much of the good pineapple, usable pineapple away. So all I do is I come in from right here and because I'm right-handed, you won't be able to see this too well, but I come in from the middle and cut my way out. <clears throat> and you just barely want to get the core. Okay? Very little waste. I'm going to put that off to the side and get all four of these small pieces of core. And you gotta be careful, these were, when we got these, they were extremely um, unripe, 
or not ripe, whatever you want to call it, um, we had to wait for them to get ripe. They were hard as a rock and green when we got them. But now they're ready. So, But some of the skin is still tough on the outside. So sometimes cutting through that back end of the core is a little rough. Okay. There's that one. <clears throat> now we'll get this last one. Okay. All right. So all the cores are done. So now you got four pieces with nothing but just the skin to get off. Okay, now your next step is going to be to remove the skin from the rest of the fruit. Again, I usually start from the middle because it is so hard to judge how far down I go if I don't start at the bottom part in the middle of the fruit. But basically all you do is cut the bottom edge around almost like you would a watermelon and you cut the rind basically. And you try to get as close to it as you can and that's basically how you do that. All right, so we have that, and we're going to put these off to the side. We'll be able to give these to either the chickens or the pigs. Somebody will eat them. But you basically have to do this with all four corner or quarters, sorry, <clears throat> just to make sure we get everything off of these, off the skin. Okay, now one quick side note. When you cut the pineapple this way, you will see these little specks that show up real close to the skin. Now at first, I thought they were like bugs. I didn't know that pineapple actually had seeds really close to the skin. So that's basically when you cut. Now I've heard people try to plant the pineapple seeds. I haven't heard about any success. Um, if any of you have had success with that, um, I would love to hear about it. You can put it in the comments below. Um, but that's basically, if you were trying to harvest the seeds, basically what you would do is just start to lift those seeds out and you can save them, dry them, and plant them. Now that we've cleaned up, our next step is going to be cutting the actual pineapple into chunks to be able to put onto the dehydrator trays. So what I like to do is I cut into about three pieces and then just, they're kind of thin pieces because you want them to be able to dehydrate and not take forever to do. Now normally it takes about 16 hours and we like ours a little bit thicker than you know you'll see sometimes in different fruit mixes and stuff sometimes you'll see them they're thicker and sometimes they're thinner. Um, we prefer the thicker kind because they tend to hold the flavor a little bit better. And then all you do is place them on the tray. These actually turned out a little bit smaller than I'd like them. So the next ones I'll probably cut only into two. This might have been one of the smaller pieces. But you just lay them onto the tray. Give them a little bit of space in between each one until you fill your tray up. Now, when we get ready to dehydrate these, we'll take all of these. We've, I don't know if you can see, we'll pan around, I'm sure, soon. We've already done a few trays. So we've got two more trays we need to put together. And we'll set these 
We have a book that came with it that tells us exactly what setting to put it on. And then I think we do it for about 16 hours, I think, before they're completely done. This one I'll cut into twos instead of threes. And then that way they'll be a little bit bigger before, um, then that way we'll, we'll have a little bit bigger pieces to be able to put into the jars. Hmm. Wow, those were kind of thick. I think maybe those I'll keep off to the side to eat. All right. So we'll put these smaller pieces on there. Fill up the trays, and then we should be ready to go. Okay, now we have them on the trays. I'm going to load this up. Put it in there. And then put the lid on. And it goes this way. And then turn it to 135 degrees. We'll wait for 16 hours. So tomorrow we'll check this. And if everything's good to go, we'll pull the trays out and we'll show you how to store them. Well, it's been 16 hours. Let's go ahead and check the dehydrator and see if they're ready. Make sure to turn off your machine before you open it up. And lift up the door and pull out one of these trays and see. I think they look pretty good. Dried, ready to go. I think I got a taste test one. I'll see. I think they're good. Next thing we'll do is go ahead and get them ready to be prepped and put into jars to be stored. Now that the pineapple's done dehydrating, it's time to put it away. But where are you gonna put it? Some people put them in Ziploc bags, others will put them in food saver bags. And we used to do that, we used to use food saver bags, but the problem with those, at least the kind that we always buy, were not reusable. And it seemed like we were always having to throw away plastic and then reuse and buy, buy more instead of reusing them. So what we started to do was use mason jars. And we use those because we're canning all the time. So we always have a few of these lying around. So the first thing you're going to do if you decide to use jars, because I'm sure most of you do have jars just lying around, um, we have to sanitize these. And so we've got a pot of water um, boiling. And we have our wonderful tongs to be able to drop the jar down in. And you're just going to grab the jar, put it in there just for a few seconds. Don't burn yourself like me. Let it sit there. And then we'll go ahead and pull it back out. And if you want, you'll be able to get in on this in just a second and see. I like to grab it and then pour all the water out before I come anywhere near anything else and then grab it put it down now normally when you're canning you would take the lid and put the lid down in there but we're not going to be actually canning these per se so I don't need to take the lid and put it down in the water so we'll just leave that there for now once your jars are sanitized go ahead and use your canning funnel makes it a lot easier and you're going to pull these off of the rack and just put them inside your jar okay now when you get closer to when it's almost full you can kind of push these down just a little bit they will move down just a little for you and kind of shake it around a little bit. Put a few more in there. Now you don't have to worry about head space because in the dehydrating part where we, I mean in the um, 
when we use the food saver, you don't have to worry about that. When you're canning and stuff, you do have to worry about headspace. But with these, all we're doing is removing air, so we're not really worried about that. All right, now that you have the pineapple packed into the jars, next thing you're going to do is take the air out. And how we do that is we use a food saver. And Food Saver came up with this nifty little thing that you can hook onto your jars to be able to take the air out. Now, they come in both sizes. You can use regular or wide mouth. For this video, we're using regular mouth. So we'll go ahead and use this attachment. First thing you'll do, separate your lid from your rim. Go ahead and put the lid down onto your jar, make sure that it's level and it's on properly. Then go ahead and take your attachment, put it down on the jar, and make sure again that it's sitting level and there's no play on it, no wiggle room. Go ahead and take your hose, connect it to the top, and then again connect it to your accessory port. Make sure that both of these connections are on very well so there's no leak. Next thing you'll do, make sure that you lock down your machine, otherwise it won't turn on. And then go ahead and push your vacuum seal button. All right, and once it stops, you can go ahead and turn off your machine and pull this away. And then you can pull the top off gently. All right, and then as you can see, it's indented right there and all the air is out of the, out of the pineapple. Just go ahead and put your rim on and you're ready to go. Well, I hope this video has helped you today. Don't forget to check us out on our website at www.bigbearhomestead.com. You can also check us out on Facebook. Give us the old like so you can keep up with all the great things that are going on on our farm. You can also check us out on Twitter. And if you really liked this video today, go ahead and like, share, and even subscribe. You never know what you'll catch over here on the homestead. Thank you and have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Y'all come back now, you hear?